Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. You're watching Earnings with BQ and our guest today is Mr. Ramesh Swaminathan, the CFO at Lupin. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having us on. Lupin's had a great quarter with its margins, profits, a beat on all fronts. Uh, profits came in at 452 crores versus the estimated 258 crores and a loss in the quarter last year. Um, margins came in at 17.8% versus 4.4% last year. Operating profit rose 422%. Um, so what has led to this performance? And uh, what sort of, uh, how, how do you view this business going forward for the year? Yeah, uh, as I was saying, firstly, uh, uh, there has been secular growth across all our markets. So if you look at, for example, America, um, you know, we recorded the same, um, uh, in fact, higher than, slightly higher than, in fact, uh, Q4 of last, of, uh, of the previous year. Um, and um, this, despite the fact that there's actually a, a drop in, in seasonal products, uh, we were, of course, aided by the fact that we were able to launch Darnavir in, uh, uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, apart from that, if you look at India, it's recorded a, a very good performance. Um, you know, uh, it's double digit. Uh, if you were to, uh, you know, take away the, uh, you know, the and this, despite the impact of uh, a negative impact of NLEM, so to speak, which actually happened, uh, um, you know, last year um, in, the, in the beginning of this year. So essentially, uh, apart from that, the most important reason is the fact that we were able to uh, record a milestone uh, payment uh, from from Abbey for one of our, uh, you know, our molecules that we kind of uh, outlicensed to them. Uh, all of this actually helped in um, in. In growing the top line, and of course, um, you know uh, the gross margins, and of course the bottom line also. So, a question on the milestone payment: If we were to, if we were to exclude that number, um, how much has the uh, margin? How how much has the margin come at? Come in at? And uh, are we in line for the 18% exit rate that we're looking at for Q4? Yes. Um, if you look at the gross margin expansion. 1.6% is actually brought in by, in fact, this Abbey, uh, you know, milestone. Uh, but this, uh, apart from that, there's, of course, uh, other things which uh, which helped out. Essentially, as I was saying, there's a Darnovid launch in America. The entire sales mix uh, in, in America, despite the seasonal products uh, being, you know, being lower. Uh, there's, of course, the momentum on the India regional front uh, and a host of, um, you know, uh, initiatives in terms of the, you know, or the cost in imperatives that we have that we've been working on, all of this actually paid uh, uh, dividends for us, rich dividends. So there was, of course, a lowering of overall freight costs and the like. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think all of this is sustainable in, uh, you know, from a gross margins perspective because there are newer products which are coming in, including uh, Spiriva and a few other products during uh, the, the, the course of the, of the current fiscal itself. Um, we also had, in fact, um, you know, a higher complement of uh, of R and D spends. Uh, so if you look at the EBITDA margins, it's after taking into account the higher R and D spend vis-a-vis the Q4, uh, and of course there are a couple of uh, you know one-time elements are kept in. Essentially, the kind of expenditure that have been incurring on uh, you know on nitrous means uh, test you know testing uh, you know the entire portfolio for those the impurities and to the extent the quality assurance uh, you know uh, the cost on that was was uh, on the uh, you know was uh, was incurred there. Uh, we also had in fact. Uh, 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 a provision that we had made for uh, business settlement, you know, with one of the parties. Um, so all of this actually went into the, uh, the making of, in fact, the EBITDA margin. And uh, and uh, despite that, there has actually been an increase. So we believe that, uh, and if you knock it off, it obviously would have been higher. Um, in the in the quarters to come, we expect newer products, and as a result, we do think that's certainly going to step up. Our um, um, margin uh, guidance of over 18% certainly stays. You are fairly confident that he'd be in a position to kind of exceed it also. Okay. Uh, that's a positive. Uh, so there was also a generic version of Prezistar which was launched, right, uh, which is under 180 days exclusivity. So, um, after, so there's, there's some amount of revenue that's coming from this product as well. Now, now what happens after 180 days? This is just for understanding the U.S. market. Also, how is the price erosion there right now? Because you all have had a 10% growth. So, uh, is there recovery on the base business, or is it because of the newer launches, like you mentioned, Daranovir? So, um, how is it? So that's exactly the reason why we were able to able to get the step up. Uh, you know, Daranovir is actually taken up. 
Um, but we would be able to sustain this in the in the quarters to come because there are newer products coming up. Spiriva, which is a much bigger launch, um, you know, we would be recording from the second quarter onwards. Uh, we also have smaller products, you know, uh, diazepam, uh, rectal gel, um, uh, and uh, senecobalamin. So those are products that you'd be launching in uh, in the U.S. So uh, all of this will certainly contribute to kind of stepping up the the top line and uh, and flow through to the to the bottom line also. So that's where we are on this. And so how's the price erosion there? The price, uh, you know, has been contained because, uh, you know, everybody has been kind of uh, feeling the pinch out there because of, uh, you know, uh, the kind of pressures that we saw, intensity of competition and the price erosion. There have been a lot of, uh, you know, players who have actually laid off parts of their portfolio because it's not remunerative. Uh, mm -hmm. So to the extent, uh, now in some ways, there are, uh, there is a, you know, uh, when there is lesser competition to the extent there is always you know, a, a more uh, salubrious in, impact on the prices, uh, and um, there are in fact drug shortages that the government, that the you know the FDA is speaking about as a result of a lot of people giving way on the on the portfolio. Uh, so we do believe that um, the prices are stabilizing at um, uh, you know uh, erosion is stabilizing at high single digit numbers. Um, so um, and that's perhaps uh, good for the industry. So one more question on the drug shortages. Uh, does our portfolio have a lot of exposure to the drugs that are seeing shortage in the U.S.? And are we expected to benefit from that? Everybody has, uh, you know, some portion of that, uh, you know, which, which plays in. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, for example, we have a fairly good, uh, robust, uh, you know, acute therapy product portfolio, and there's a shortage of that, and you know, in uh, you know, and there was a good demand for it also in the previous in the previous quarter, for example. Mm -hmm. So it plays in, you know, it really depends on the portfolio of the individual player, and it always helps to uh, to have those products. And so what sort of revenues for Spiriva are we seeing in this year? Uh, you guided for, I think, 140 or million for the upcoming year, but like what is sort of revenue that we are seeing? We have year? not guided for any uh, product numbers at all, so you don't catch me on that. So we have not actually, we don't do that at all. Uh, but having said that, given the fact that it's going to be uh, – uh, near exclusive, uh, exclusive uh, exclusivity for us for over uh, for at least two to three years. Mm. Uh, we do expect to get uh, pretty good pricing, um, which will actually flow through from a you know overall turnover and and, and volume perspective also. And so there's a like you like you mentioned uh, there's almost an eight percent R and D expenditure that we are incurring. So what is the sort of pipeline that is expected? Because we spoke of moving to complex generics. So uh, if you could help us with what therapy areas we are targeting, um, how are we taking these things forward? Is it for the U.S.? Are we also looking at other markets? Uh, what's the strategy going forward? That's a good question. So uh, essentially, from our perspective, uh, you know, the uh, old solid dosage business will, you know, will, uh, you know, the, because the intensity of competition being what it is out there, mm -hmm. um, will actually see a lower spend. Uh, but at the same time, we're kind of uh, stepping up um, uh, on the gas when it comes to for you know, spends on uh, the complex ones, which includes the entire inhalations portfolio, the complex injectables piece, and in some ways biosimilars as well. Um, and that, I think, would carry the day for us going forward. Um, it's going to be stepped down when it comes to um, oral solid, but step up on a host of others. Uh, but overall, R&D expenditure as a percentage, you see, it will keep going down. But the absolute numbers would be pretty large as it is. So I want to understand a little bit about the India business. We've recorded a double-digit growth. And, and what exactly is keeping up this momentum? Like you mentioned, the NLEM did hit the portfolio a little bit. So what exactly is working? Also, um, uh, there's a lot of trade generic stocks that's creeping in, you know, for branded formulations that it could hurt the branded formulations over a period of time. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, is Looping planning to enter this category? Uh, or uh, what sort of future do you see in India? India is, of course, going to be the dominant theme for us at Lupin. You know, it's, it's certainly a, a very large chunk of our overall uh, turnover. It's over 35 percent, and we only see that uh, sustaining and growing. Um, um, this particular quarter, we spoke about pretty good growth, and this is coming in from, in fact, the areas that we have already traditionally been strong in, which is essentially cardiovascular, diabetes, respiratory. Um, but we're also uh, gathering the pace when it comes to uh, therapy areas like GI uh, and women's health. Uh, so all of those would potentially be, you know, growth areas from our perspective. Um, you spoke about mass marketing as well. You know, so it's not as though we do have, in fact, uh, our uh, portfolio of products for, in fact, mass marketing. 
Um, so that will certainly continue. And in so far as uh, you know, uh, the generalization uh, of the you know, as it as 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 you were, um, I think uh, you know the INN uh, portfolio, so to speak, it's going to be um, you know it will certainly be uh, you know uh, an irritant and, and certainly in some ways uh, you know um, you know um, be uh, you know a, a spot spot for in fact the industry, uh, but it's going to be quite some time before it actually takes any big uh, you know. Uh, market share from an overall uh, India perspective. So then do we also intend as, I mean, Lupin as a company intends to enter the trade generics uh, business? We're already business. in it, as I was saying. We're already into it. But yeah. uh, what, is, what is the sort of percentage that you're seeing from the business then? It's going at a fairly healthy clip. Um, and um, it's, an, it's an important part of our overall, uh, you know, offerings to the market. It's part of the affordable medicines kit, so to speak. Hmm. So usually, uh, what sort of margins do we see on a trade generics portfolio versus a branded formulations portfolio? How much is the difference there? In a general sense, the India business is fairly, fairly robust. You know, so essentially, um, I would not try to it and, and trade trade generics would obviously be uh, uh, lower. You know, uh, from um, as compared to branded generics, so to speak. Uh, but um, it still remains as a portfolio fairly robust. Okay. Uh, also, so what is the sort of growth that we are seeing for the upcoming years, uh, considering the kind of pipeline that we have? Uh, if you could give us um, a short-term perspective on Lupin. Um, our, um, if you speak about uh, Lupin as a whole, uh, you know, we are working on, in fact, the respiratory portfolio and the injectables portfolio. And we'll have, um, you know, cashier products, which will potentially be global. Products, so to speak, which will be, uh, which will be, you know, kind of um, sold across the entire world, uh, you know, either through a direct presence or potentially partnering in uh, through with other con countries uh, for distribution in, in those countries where we are not uh, domiciled really, and um, and uh, and of course we are working on, in fact, uh, creating the same kind of a possibility with, in fact, biosimilars uh, and eventually with speciality. And you know, so um, we do think that the healthcare business, the pharmaceutical business, is 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 uh, you know has a tremendous future given all of these possibilities. And are you looking at any organic and organic growth opportunities? Uh, is that being evaluated? We are always on the lookout for propositions which are compelling. You know, as long as the there is a uh, and it is actually fits into our overall strategy. Uh, and as long as it's uh, you know right from a price perspective, because we would uh, we believe in. Uh, and calibrate regression on that score, you know, uh, by uh, for a cost and not at all cost, so to speak. As long as the value proposition is uh, is there, we would be looking at it. And that will be for which geography? Would it be India? It is really on uh, on India, uh, but there are uh, niches where we would like to, for example, if you be believe that um, you have to have a strategic, uh, you know, beachhead in a particular country, as for example we did in France very recently, uh, mm -hmm. or for example uh, we've been doing buying for speciality in America and the like, um, mm -hmm. the kind of proposals that you would be entertaining. Thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you.